Hey guys, I uh, hope y'all are staying safe. I know we're all kind of stuck inside and um, I know most of y'all have a ton of schoolwork uh, to make up for this time off. So I hope y'all are being diligent with that. I hope y'all are getting things done that you need to get done um, and that you're enjoying some time off, uh, some time to just get to stay home and kind of hang out. I want to just kind of build upon what we talked about last week. And so last week we talked about the importance of spiritual disciplines, specifically scripture reading and making sure you're maintaining um, you know, just taking time to read each day. So we had kind of this challenge for y'all to sit down for a segmented time of the day, some time to give you 15, 20 minutes to sit down, pray through what you were going to read, um, read through a passage, um, whether a chapter or a section, whatever that might have been, uh, and then to write down kind of what it is you saw God teaching you through that and how you could apply what you learned there into your daily life. So as you go back to school, as you, you know, as eventually all this kind of levels out and evens out and we're able to kind of walk back into normal life, um, that you just would have something to carry along with you, as well as have that habit of making sure you're maintaining your time in scripture. Um, and so we talked about that last week. Uh, and I want to kind of expand on that a little bit, but then build on another spiritual discipline as well. And so part of what we talked about when we talked about reading scripture was taking some time to pray before you started, just asking God to show you something, reveal something to you. And in that same way, I want to kind of build upon that idea of what prayer is. So the spiritual discipline I want to talk about this week is prayer and what is the importance of prayer? Why do we pray? What is it supposed to look like? And there's a lot of scripture you could kind of go through. There's a lot of passages uh, where you can look at how Jesus prays, how different um, prophets pray and speak to God. But I think there's a key thing here that, that I want to kind of focus on when we talk about prayer. And that's this passage in 1 Thessalonians 5, um, 16 through 18, which tells us Always be joyful, never stop praying, and be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And so Paul builds on this idea in this letter that belonging to Christ, being a Christian, being a follower of Christ, means that you should be thankful in all circumstances because you it's easier to see and understand what it is you're going through, to understand who's got your back, how you're going to make it out. Um, and remember, he's building off this idea that to, to die is gain. Right. So, so the worst thing that could possibly happen to us is death. And so death is winning. Death is getting into heaven. Death is getting to be freed from sin, from from that kind of thing and to be in the presence of God. And so we have this idea he builds up of always be joyful and always be thankful in all circumstances. And so that's very important. I don't want to skip over that part of the passage, but I really want to focus on verse 17, which just says never stop praying in my version. Um, pray without ceasing, always pray. There's different translations, but the idea is the same as that we continually pray. There's not an end point. There's not a start point. We just are continually praying. And so I want to kind of build on this idea of what that would be. What does it mean to be always praying? And so it's easy to kind of get lost in that, well, I should always have my head bowed and my hands folded and you know my eyes closed and on my knees at the side of my bed. Like we have this depiction of how we pray because there's a lot of times in scripture where we see Christ on his knees praying. We see people bowing their heads in reverence to God as they pray, as they talk to him. But this idea of praying without ceasing, of always praying, never stop praying, it's a conversation. That's what that's what Paul's getting at, is prayer is a conversation. It's, it's something that you sit down and you just talk to God. And so just to give you some kind of idea, um, those conversations look different every time. Right, you. When you sit down to have a meal, we pray over our food that God would bless the food, that God would protect us. Whatever it is you ask for in those prayers, a lot of times they're kind of, you know, there's a formula to them. Bless the food, bless the hands that prepared it, and help our conversations be glorifying to you. A lot of times that's where my dad and I kind of do the same thing, where I, I fit those three points in a prayer before a meal. But this prayer without ceasing, you can't bow your heads. Your parents can't bow their heads if they're driving. If you're driving, you can't bow your head and close your eyes praying while you're driving. But if you're driving to school, if you're riding in a car to school, a lot of times that's a good time to have a conversation. Just kind of cut off the radio and just talk to God about what's coming up. If you've got tests, someone at school's just really annoying and you don't want to deal with them, you know, just talking to God about what it is you're going through and struggling with. And God knows these things. God doesn't need you to tell him what's wrong. But a lot of but that's that's what God wants us to do. 
that's what God wants to have those conversations. He wants to hear us just tell him what's going on, how our day's going. He wants to hear these things. One of the um, examples that I've always used is a conversation or a relationship with a friend or with a parent even. So if you have your best friend, think of your best friend. I know our youth have heard this over and over again, but they're going to hear it more. Um, think of your best friend. And if your best friend, you see them most of the time at school, well, then this past two weeks, you probably haven't gotten to see them any. But have you had conversations with them? Have you texted them, called them, talked to them in some other way? Have you had conversations with them? Because if you've had conversations with them, then that relationship is still going to be just as strong when we do get back to school, when we do get back to wherever it is, sports, whatever um, venue that you have, you see that friend in most of the time. And so as when you keep those conversations going, then there's no lapse in that relationship. But then think about that same friend. If you, if we're out three to four weeks and you don't see that person, you don't talk to that person, you, there's just no conversations happening, then what's that relationship going to look like? Is that conversation, is that relationship going to be as strong when you get back as it was when you left? And this is kind of the idea we have with God. Yes, God knows what we're going through. Your friend normally knows what you're going through. They see it on a regular basis most of the time. But when you sit back and share with that friend, when you sit back and talk about this is what I'm struggling with, this is why I'm struggling with it, this is why this person's getting on my nerves, this is, you know, this is why I'm doing so bad in this class. When you begin walking through that with somebody, they can give you perspective, they can help you along the way. And that's that's the same thing God's asking for with prayer. It's just to have that conversation. It's to tell him what it is you're struggling with. And so a lot of times that conversation can look different. That's why I talk about, you know, our, our meal prayers a lot of times are very formulaic. They hit the same kind of points, and then we say amen, and we dig in, and we eat. But not all prayer is that way, right? Prayer can be a time to question God, right? Why is it that this is happening? Why is it that I'm struggling with this particular thing? And that's okay. We see David multiple times. If you want to read through Psalms, um, if you want to read through any passage of David, a lot of times it doesn't take you long to get to a point where David is upset. He's frustrated. He's having a hard time, and he's just crying out to God, asking God why. You know, why is this happening? Why am I struggling with this? Why is this a problem? And a lot of times we don't think we can speak to God in that manner. We think that that's the incorrect way to approach a prayer. But we also see in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus does the same thing. Jesus sits down and he says, listen, Father, if there's a way this cup can pass from me, please let it. Right? He takes a moment to say, I'm really struggling because I don't want to do this. I don't want to be a part of this. This is going to be awful. If there's any way you can take this from me and we can accomplish this in another way, please let's do it. But he comes back to this idea of, but your will be done, right? I'm still submitting to you. I just want you to understand and hear that I'm really having a hard time following through with this. And so it's okay to have those prayers of frustration. It's okay to have those prayers of questioning as long as we understand that we're still submitting to God. And so this conversation can be different. If you have any questions about I'm not being clear about something. If you have any questions about what maybe how to begin those conversation prayers, how to begin those um, conversations with God, feel free to reach out. Feel free to call, um, text us. We'll be happy to kind of walk with you through it. It's it's a difficult thing to start. Um, but let me tell you, once you kind of get into that routine of those prayers being conversations, um, it's a it's a beautiful thing. And it's a thing you don't want to avoid. It's a thing that you do, like Paul says, you do want to pray continually. You never want to stop. You never want to cease. And you want to really push through and have those conversations because you begin seeing how those prayers and those conversations build your faith. They build your relationship with God. And they make it stronger. They make it better. They make it easier to rely on God, um, even in times of frustration and, and struggle. And so we've, we talked last week, I left y'all with the challenge of making sure you were reading your Bible once a day, just having a little time to pray over it, read through it, write it down. And this week I want to tack on just a little bit more. Just find some time during the day where you can just sit down and talk to God about what's going on. Maybe just everything going on in the world right now, the, the kind of weirdness and uniqueness of the situation we really are in at the moment. Um, you know, maybe just talking about you're struggling with dealing with a brother or sister that you're just locked in the house with and you can't go anywhere. Um, but finding 
just a time to have that conversation. Just tell him what's going on in your life. Tell him what you're struggling with, what you're having a hard time understanding, maybe in your scripture reading, and just kind of talk to him, right? It's five, ten minutes max. Uh, just sit down and, and you'll see as you begin to kind of get in that routine and begin to do that more and more, you'll see that that time gets longer. You'll see that those conversations get deeper and you, you'll see that like you will begin to see if you've been taking time to dive into scripture, you begin really looking forward to those times. You begin looking forward to, okay, I get to get into scripture. I get to speak to my creator. I get to, to have this relationship with someone who created me uniquely. And so we're going to keep kind of walking through this um, however long we're out, however long this situation kind of persists. We're going to keep walking through these ideas of spiritual disciplines and of how they pull you closer to God, how they build on that relationship. Um, and so I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope y'all are staying sane for the most part. And I hope y'all are getting all your work done. Bye.